Teresa from my senior farewell speech. I'm going to talk about like the people that have helped me throughout the years and I'm gonna go over my experience in high school. So at the beginning, um, I was born on January 3rd, 1997 and at McEwen's Hospital. And I'm the oldest in my family, so I have like three siblings. And I would consider myself like the guinea pig of the family because my mom and dad used to say they had no clue like what to do with me when I was born. And they have tons of pictures of me doing like absolutely nothing. So I felt like I was like a sense of accomplishment for them. So they just took a bunch of pictures as a way to prove it. Um, parents, like we don't think they understand us. My parents, like I've been fortunate enough to have two parents that have always been there for me no matter what. They've supported me through like various activities that I've done. And I've learned like a lot from both my parents because they've each like grown up in totally two different households. So it's kind of been awesome to see how they like helped me in different ways. Um, I always felt like they never understood me, but in the end, like as I've gotten older, I've kind of realized that everything they do, they're just trying to do to help me become a better person, and it's never trying to like, make me upset or anything. So, moving on to my sister. She, we're 22 months apart, so basically we've grown up together, and there's like no memory I have without Katie. She, for those of you who know her, like we're nothing alike at all. She's like in the musicals, and she's not like athletic or anything. And she is awesome because instead of like going to swim meets, I go to musicals and see like all the different things that she does. So instead of just doing like repetitive things, it's cool to have totally two different things to go to. And she's always been there for me, like no matter what. Like if I need to like vent about something, she's literally always there to listen, even when she really doesn't want to. And then my brother, okay, so he's six years younger than me, and growing up in, like, school, I've noticed school's totally different than, like, when we were in school, because he uses his iPod, and he's in sixth grade, like, I don't think we used iPods in sixth grade, and he plays, like, ice hockey, and he does travel soccer, so it's also cool because, I don't know, like, I never really, like, really liked soccer all that much, but I like it now, because he's, like, actually decent so it's actually cool to watch him and ice hockey like we don't have any family members that are in hockey so it's also really neat to go to those games and he creates like a balance in our house too because with me and my sister he kind of has like he's the mediator in the majority of our fights so moving on to my cousins um i have a family like full of cousins like there's l at least 20 of us and we go to the beach like every year and we've gone since I was like basically born because I've been fortunate enough to do that. And it's awesome because we've gone to like a bunch of different beaches like Myrtle Beach and the Outer Banks and now we're at Hilton Head. And we're also close in age so we've practically like grown up together. There's at least like I have a cousin now he's like graduating and we went through like the whole college process together and we went through like communions and it's really neat to actually have like someone there with you because they kind of like know what you're going through. So a big like stepping stone in my life was when I transferred from Catholic school to a public school and that was it when I was going to seventh grade and I went to St. E's for K through sixth grade and I played a bunch of sports there and I knew like everyone and that's kind of like how the thing is when you're in Catholic school and when I moved to Harrison it was kind of difficult because I don't know Catholic school like they always like you would talk about like public school and I don't know, it always sounded so scary, but it actually like, was a lot better than Catholic school. And I had adjusted to meeting new people, but at the same time, I joined swimming, so that was a really big help. And I made a lot of new friends through that, and some of which I'm still like, friends with this day, even though that they've already graduated. Alrighty, so moving on to my freshman year. I don't know, I think by far anyone could say freshman year is the year you have the most friends, because everyone is like on an equal playing field, because you're in new building and I swam for the varsity swim team but I had also that year learned a lot of valuable lessons from the seniors because they always would tell me that oh it's the quickest four years of your life and I really never believed them and I always thought it was going to be the longest four years of my life but I was wrong. Um, I also made like a lot of new friends on that team too like a lot of upperclassmen and I still keep in touch with some of them to this day. Um, I also set the goal that I wanted to be captain of the swim team my senior year. So that was something that I, I've had my eyes on since freshman year. And I also think it was one of the most academically challenging years of high school because you go from eighth grade where people are like, 
the same, like, you know, you're in the same class, but you may have a different ability, but then you go to high school and you're in honors classes and those people have equal or more ability than you do. So, all right, so my sophomore year, I think it was the most awkward days of high school because you're not an upperclassman yet, but you're not a hated freshman. And then that year I had lost my pappy, so that was probably one of the toughest times of my life because it was like the real first loss of someone who was extremely close to me. So I kind of just like gave up on like school and swimming and I just really didn't care about anything for a couple of months. And I think that kind of like played out into just like looking at schools because I knew junior year was a big year and I just really didn't care about anything and I just kind of like made the worst of the situation. But then junior year came, and I began the year on a more positive note because my grades went up and my attitude toward things were a lot better because I had used his death as a way to kind of motivate me and do things like in memory of him. Um, that year I also got like accepted into National Honor Society, so that was kind of like a wake up call that like my work is actually like paying off in the long run. And one of the worst things I hated about junior year was like all the standardized tests because I never understood why SATs define you as a person, like a number defines you. I don't understand that at all. But I felt like that was the longest year of, the, of like freshman through junior year, that was the longest year. And that year I was trying to figure out like exactly what I wanted to do with my life. So that also like played a role in it. So senior year came along and it honestly didn't feel like I was a senior for the first half of the year just because, I don't know, like you're still with the same people. Besides like preschool, that kind of like made me realize I was a senior, but other than that, like that was like the only thing. And, but then once swim season came along, um, I became the girls team captain and we were actually under a new coach, but I had like, he's been my coach for my club team since I was in middle school. So I was really excited because he is like a fresh new look like on the sport itself because he goes like different events and stuff to see how he can better us. And he chose like Dan Maloney and I were captains and we had like a lot of, we had a really big team this year, well girls team at least, they had a big team and we had the be best record that we've had like all four years I was here. So I felt like that was like really cool to be the captain and have the girls team actually be decent for once. And once senior rec hit though, that's when it hit me that like I won't be like a swimming for Baldwin anymore and I won't, I'm not swimming in college so I knew like my swim career was basically over and it just, I think that's like most like athletes can deter. Like when you are, when your senior rec comes and they're like talking about, oh, you know, next year you're like, oh, that's, I'm not gonna be there next year, but I think the team would be in really good hands. And the whole year I was like throwing back and forth where I actually exactly wanted to go. And I kind of like was trying to lean toward like what my parents wanted me to do. But in the end, I actually chose like what I wanted to do. So I'm actually really happy about my decision. And then I know like a lot of people aren't here that who I want to thank, but I want to thank like all my parents, like my parents and all my friends and classmates who have like taught me a lot of things, even though I really didn't think that I was learning at the time, but I actually did and my coaches because they pushed me and made me realize that I actually have potential. And I wouldn't be like the person I am today without any of like the experiences that I've had in my life. So it's actually like, I take everything as a learning experience. I don't think like a mistake is like a mistake. It's actually, you learn from them. And my next chapter, I'm gonna be going to Edinburgh University.